Greetings everyone, I'm Mr. Muckle Lover, and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Kaiser Redux, playing as the Empire of Japan. Now, I don't think I've played as them before, at least in Kaiser Redux, so I figured, you know what, why not? I kind of want to watch the world burn in Kaiser Redux as we have a good old time in Asia, because we love Asia, don't we? But let's begin with a focus, and I have not tried this off screen, nor have I watched anyone else really play it, but I think... Did Alex the Rambler play Kaiser Redux? Japan? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe it was Kaiserreich. I can't tell. I can't remember anything. Political power, army direction. Well, I we probably want to go down one of these routes eventually. What is this one? Jakuniku Kaioshoku. I like the political power. I really want that political power. There's nothing we can do. Rising Sun has to be after January 1937. So, I'm going to go and get the political power. Januniku or Kiyoshuku or survival of the fittest as the fundamental understanding of our military philosophy. The Western Imperials have greatly expanded the Air Force and Navies. If we do not the same, we will surely fall victim to their forces. Cool. So we have, oh, recovering from the Lost Decade. Oh, boy. And what has become known as the Lost Decade? The 20s were marked by economic depression and political instability in Japan. The plot was particularly severe in the agricultural sector and caused a massive democratic ch demographic change, as farmers fled from the depressed countryside to urban areas, flooding the labor market and further driving down wages. After leaving, or leaving the Kansai Kai-led constitutionalist coalition and taking car charge of the government, Inu Inukai and his cabinet successfully expanded the Japanese spheres of influence into Manchuria and the edges of Siberia, acquiring a vital export market for the Japanese economy, but the agricultural situation continued to deteriorate as cheap agricultural imports from Manchuria bled into the countryside. As 1936 dawns, continued rearmament and state investment have fully rebuilt the industrial economy, but the issue of rural poverty remains chronic and unsolved. Gaman Shiyu. And obviously I forgot to finish uh, editing our army here. Oh boy, that is not good. Oh, cool, that's not bad. Oh no, President Kerensky. Oh no, the Montetsu declares record earnings. Japan had a presence in Manchuria ever since the conclusion of the Russo-Japanese War, and in the years since our hold over the region has greatly strengthened. The negotiations at Shanghai in 1928 forced the world to recognize our right to a free hand in Manchuria, opening boundless opportunity to our citizens under the Kwantung's army's watchful eye. Our control is not, not yet absolute, however, and Zhang Zulin's Feng Xin government is not always cooperative. It is fortunate for him that our desire to safeguard a profitable peace in Manchuria remains paramount, alongside our hope that his government will one day act as a vehicle for a greater Chinese ambitions. For these reasons, the heart of our efforts in Manchuria and South Manchuria Railway Company are Amandetsu, for short, which has become responsible for developing and exploiting vast swaths of the Manchurian economy, propelling the region to become Japan's primary source of coal and steel, as well as the producer of over half the world's soybean supply. Today, Matsu, Matetsu has announced the highest, highest profits to date. Manchuria is truly a cornucopia of opportunity. Very nice. And for infantry, Tanaka, Shizu, Shizuki, uh, Voting Rights and Litigation Council. Legation cities uh, were formed in 1928 as a result of the Americans intervening in the Zili Fengxin conflict that they believed was going to spill out into open war between ourselves and the Zili and the German backers. When a passenger train was attacked by Chinese warlords, America saw the opportunity to mediate not only in order to create a more permanent solution to the instability in the East, but also ensure an open door policy in China which allows all powers equal access to Chinese markets. Consisting of all official concessions in China as well as a 30 mile neutral zone, the legation cities, officially known as the International Mandate for the Chinese Concessions, also hosts a forum the Legation Council, for the various powers within the Chinese interest to coordinate their policies better. As the foremost power in the Far East, we naturally are able to vote on the Council and both, both further our Chinese agenda and stymie your enemies. How exciting! Oh, yes, please. Uh, and we shall be led by good old Field Marshal Hata Shunroku. Marines. Mm. Anyone have suffered naval... Stuff here? No? Oh, look! Substance abuser. I love substances. Wait, well, maybe I shouldn't say that, but hey, whatever! Horsies? Alright, um. Who's a good horsey there? We have one of the person at the top, but it hurts our XP gain, so. Not seeing anybody here, really. Horsies. A little bit of lag here from time to time in China. Hopefully, we'll go to explode. Ah, oh, so handsome. Mosley is. And Toto's Charter, cool. And anything else? Nope. Queen, King Edward VIII. Well, good luck with that. And dissolution of the Diet. The four-year term of the incumbent Imperial Diet elected in 1932 is ending. Prime Minister Inukai Tsuyoshi has called for a general election to happen as soon as possible. Very well. Very, very well. Alright. There you are. I thought I saw him earlier, but... Also, we're trying to train the ships, and obviously we're out of fuel already. 
No, ooh. Partial mobilization might not be bad. Can we grab anybody else? Oh, what do you have for the army? Industrial concerns. Maybe some of this eventually? Maybe? I want more PP, though. Legation freedoms. More weekly stability is not bad. Mm, vote yes on stuff. Seize Tianjin. Influ influences in the legation cities. American influence is quite high. Oh, boy. Trigger instability in Tianjin. Well, I guess we might as well go to posture mobilization. This way we can get some bonuses to our construction speed for stuff and get more fuel. Because right now we got minus 25%, which is not good, and we could use a few more consumer goods. Yes, very good, very good. Very good. And currently we're doing, we have four research slots, and it looks like these people are exploding. Yep, and that's what we're researching right now, including carrier fighters, which is very weird that we don't have that yet. I need to play as China again someday, but I don't know when that's going to happen. Someday, the Great Berlin Stock Market Crash. Oh no, you can never escape poverty. Oh, I should have stopped playing this mod uh, that uh, huh, reminded me about that. But hey, Chen Tiao Yuan, governor of the Anhui province within the eighth League of Eight Provinces, has asked for our support in the upcoming struggle against the Qing and the League. Whilst Chen takes a strong anti concessions white viewpoint and receives most of his support from this movement, he also recognizes the position he has found himself trapped in. Either sticks with his ideals and loses his land, his army is likely his life, or reaches out and comes knocking on the door of the most powerful nation in all of East Asia. Urged by the governor of Zhejiang, Chen Yi, to establish contact with the Feng Qian and their allies, it seems that he has chosen the latter option. This has provided us with an excellent opportunity to further weaken German hold on Nanjing and cause damage on the southern flank of the Qing center power, something we should exploit as much as possible. Caution should still be advised, however, as pushing yourselves too hard on Chen may yet cause him to reconsider or worse. Have support by, by extension, his chances of victory evaporate. Another piece has entered the board. Black money reaches the shores eventually. Oh boy. As expected, the domino effect of the economic failure of German Empire reached our empire. While we're not as affected as our neighbors in the region due to our quite grand economic isolation from the German markets, we are still touched by it. And Zabatsu in our bank. Oh, hard time for these few next few months. That was to be expected, but mission from Norway. We recently received a tra trade delegation from the Kingdom of Norway. The country now seeks trading partners and is not part of a German Reichs Pact that dominates trade on the European mainland. They seek to trade, among other things, dried fish and have offered us very favorable rates on Norwegian merchant shipping. Most of our trade experts are in favor of accepting, while a few oppose the use of foreign shipping and moving Japanese goods. Politely decline? Ah, oh, sure, why not? Good relations. The Norwegians and Japanese have always had tremendous relations, but the general election of 1936. After the constitutional restoration of 1926, and the subsequent political realignment, two parties came to dominate Japanese politics, the conservative Riken Sayukai, Association of Friends of Constitutional Government, and the liberal Min Saito, the Democratic Party. The Riken Sayukai, or Sayukai, has an absolute majority from the general election of 1932, but support in the country said their traditional voting base has been declining. As the political atmosphere turned against the ruling party, the Min Saito, known as the Kensai Kai, Constitutional Government Association before 1927, solidified its electoral base throughout the cities and began expanding to the countryside, hoping to break this Sayukai's absolute majority in the diet. A new third player in the general election in 1936 is the Shaikai, or Shakai, Taishuto, Socialist Masses Party, founded by the Social Democrats and Syndicalists in 1933. It's not time to see the Sayukai have retained enough seats to keep an absolute majority. Um, social conservatism is pretty high. Led by Hirohito. They're all led by Hirohito, so... At least I hope they are. Oh, not all of them. These Syndicalists, Totalists, Radical Socialists, not so much. Um, well, this is going to have ramifications for what we do, right? Defend Democracy, the National Security Act. I guess I'll go with them. I kind of want to do the longest day, though. Or military centrism. The emperor did not support the government. Supported the government, but political force was used to overcome this. Oh. Well, honestly, I don't really care which way we go too much. I kind of go down this way, but... <sighs> Electoral reform. Has... Oh, the government has kept its majority. Okay. Women's suffrage. Do we want women's suffrage? Uh, I'd say let's let's see what happens. All right, we got seventy-five more political power, which would be very very nice. And after that, we already went to partial mobilization. Kornilov storms Moscow. Oh boy, training mission to Anqing. The Anqing clique is in dire need of additional troops to be able to meet the League. Should we send a large training mission to them? Well, victory for them would be an enormous boost to our influence within China. This training mission would constrain our own training abilities for at least a while. Nice. Oh, wow, they're not, they're, they did pretty well. Mm, we can send a whole one division. 
Well, how thick are these Marines? They are 16 combat width, better than the horses. And you are 18 combat width. Do you have an upgrade, actually? Guerrilla fighter? Not really. Ah, oh, send a horse, why not? Mobility is sometimes key to win the wars. Uh, you're minus 25%. That's just a bit too much for me, I'll be honest, man. That's too much. You got level 4 attack. There you go. And we don't have a lot of plans. We don't have a lot of anything, really. Cool. Alright, can we send any planes here? Nope. Any non jing Oh, and we have a focus. But what's going to happen? So, super events now. We're good. Physical actions. Trigger instability in Tianjin. While the world on the... Th with the world of the throws of Black Monday, China and by extension of the mandate have been badly hit with the Chinese within the cities, suffering terribly. The is reaching a boiling point and by giving our operatives in China agency the green light, we can give gain a prerogative to gain a foothold in Tianjin. Okay, we'll see what happens. In the meantime, let's do army direction. After years of bickering, it's time to make a choice as to the Imperial Army's direction. Strategic plans from the Imperial General Headquarters present four promising options. The assassination of Katayama Sen. Born in 1859, Katayama Sen was one of the most senior syndicalist leaders in Japan, known as the father of Japanese syndicalism. Exiled out of the U.S. after participating in the early social democratic movement, Katayama witnessed and was influenced by Bill Haywood's syndicalist activities in the development of the IWW and of the CSA. Katayama returned to Japan after the constitutional restoration of 1926 and founded the first legal syndicalist party in Japan, the Rodo Nominto, the Labor Farmer Party. And after the party was declared illegal in 1932, it formed another party called the Shakai Taishuto, Socialist Masses Party, an amalgamation of the social democratic parties and syndicalist movements. Yesterday, while visiting Kyoto to congratulate Taishuto member Yamamoto Senji on his election, a gang of the three far-right wingers stormed his office and beat the two men with clubs. Yamamoto survived by Katayama. Yama, age 75, never regained consciousness and died earlier today. This is going to be pretty bad then. And we sent volunteers, but they already won. Good job, guys. Good job. I can't wait till China explodes some more. We're going to need so much fuel, man. So much fuel. And I do want to do Air Force reform because I think that would be pretty important for us, as well as naval reform. I mean, we are Japan, so. Shanghai says yes. Great news from Shanghai. The mandate is going to give us a green light to further operations in Tianjin. It seems that their economic woes were just too much to maintain security in the city. Regardless, this greatly benefits ourselves, and we can now begin garrisoning more troops in Tianjin, making way for an eventual takeover. The dominoes are starting to fall. Oh, yes, please. Ah, oh, we're going to get this too, because we're going to need that eventually. We definitely, definitely, definitely will. There you go. Carry fighters, nice. Good stuff. And we're currently on limited exports, probably. Man, it looks like Hirohito's really seen some stuff. His hair's a little messy, but, you know, he's still pretty handsome. Now, where's that double chin? Oh, bolster the police command. Equip the garrison. Reinforce the garrison. Oh, bolster the police command. Why not? Oh, the one going in the lines. How lovely. In a few days, we'll have that done. How many more days for our next focus? Not too many more days. That's kind of nice. Pretty good. Path guides. Oh, meme paths have one associated guide with it. Death of Pius. Oh, meme path guides. Enjoy the show. Oh, okay. Failed coup in Beijing. Oh, boy. This country has no Kaiser guides. Oh, that sucks. Um. Well, then. Oh, the Zeely clique is here. Look at that. Legation City's not looking too great over there, but whatever. Uh, would you like some uh, volunteers? Chen Tiao Yuan. Oh, we can send out two now. Well, there you go. And we'll send over you. Because we can. Alright, boys, go ahead and train. If you need to. Nope, you guys are pretty good, actually. We don't need more. Oh, we're actually doing pretty well on resources. This is what we're constructing right now. We need more planes, obviously. We need more guns, obviously. But disagreements within the army leadership. Oh, yes. Handsome Moses won it. There we go. With the ongoing factional rivalry within the ranks of the IJA, it's found a new front. The military strategic debate with between the two rising stars, Major General Nag Nagata Tetsu Tetsuzan of the Centralist Faction and Major General Obata Toshishiro of the Restorationist Faction. General Nagata believes the Japanese economy is inadequate to sustain any kind of total warfare, and thus building up an army capable of total war should be our top objective. It calls for expanding our mobilization capability, modernizing equipment, and centralizing the command structure. General Obata's analysis is nearly identical, but he's come to a different conclusion. 
Due to the volatility or volatile international tensions, war would come to Japan before any country could ever achieve such a capacity through internal development. Accordingly, he came to the conclusion that in the future wars, the IJA must seek the quick destruction of foreign hostile forces by waging war through rapid, short, and decisive operations to avoid a long war. Both agree a centralized command structure is a good idea and saw that raw manpower tactics are a poor strategy. We can never hope to compete with Russian or Chinese manpower. You may now choose to proceed. I will choose wisely. No, we will choose wisely. Which I'm thinking, we're ever going to be fighting in Asia. You know what's terrible about Asia? Um, there's, supply sucks. I'll just be honest about it. Supply just got awful. And going down Grand Battle Plan gives you like 10% less supply consumption. Favoring too many projects for the army might be seen as unfair bias by the Navy's leadership. Well, mass assault might not be bad. Support neither general and move forward without them. Human tsunami. Favoring too many projects, whatever. A small arms research. A mass mobilization as nature may have negative consequences. Favoring too many projects might not be good. Cool. Superior firepower support Nagata. All right, research. Uh, that's not bad. Organization. I like that one. More organization is actually really nice. Envelopment tactics. More speed, initiative, and mobility. Support Obata. Mobile. I kind of like this one quite a bit more. Because my goal is to get as much more planes as possible and just dominate enemy air superiority. Um, hmm, total war readiness, though. Kind of interesting to see what the Emperor's Call would be like, though, because we could use extra manpower, but still. Superior firepower is always really nice. This is really good to get. More tempers and more organization would prefer. Eh, actually, Max Plan is not too bad either. But we're not going to have enough things for tanks here, so I'm going to go with Strength and Command Hierarchy, probably. Because I want to get rid of divided army. By ensuring the command structure is clear and strong, we can make sure our army is more centrally organized for total war. I ignore those people, so we get we already have minus fifty percent construction speed, as you can see, or planning speed really. Poor land usage, which is not good. Mantetsu profits are just great, great, great. We have uh, Transmurian profits as well. I love it, love it, love it. The fruits of the open door. On Qing training aid, not bad. Oh, actually, we get some planes too. Nice, sixty planes. Fighters? Nice. There you go. Good luck. Don't die too much. Oh, what happened to the left KMT's divisions? Oh, yeah. Here we go. Equip the garrison. Nice. Basic machine tools. Let's grab some uh, dispersed industry because I like it. Yeah, I usually like that one. Cool. And are you getting attacked? We just can't see the enemies. Friction within the Japanese left. The shock of the assassination of Katayama Sen initially, initially united the Shakai uh, Tai Shuto in solidarity against the White Terror, but the unity did not last long. The party was originally structured as a coalition of various social democrat and syndicalist organizations, only united in the goal of socialization of the economic structure with the proletariat at its foundation. Before his death, Katayama guided the party away from the ideological clashes, but deprived of its leader, the party was forced to face the question of its, pre its precise ideological position, and infighting soon began. Throughout the spring of 1936, national syndicalists called the Richi Richiroki Japan Labor Clique adopted totalism and vigorously expanded its membership, not only inside the party, but at the expense of the moderate Shaminkai Social Democratic Clique, but also from the outside party, notably from the Shaminkai controlled Nihon Rodo Sodomai. Japan General Federation of Labor, soon an open fight between the two broke out. The Nichirokai accused the Sodomai of being run by the labor bureaucratic establishment, and in turn, the Sodomai and the Shaminkai accused the Nichirokai of hijacking and turning labor organizations into their puppets. The Nichirokai's members were expelled from both the Sodomai and the Tsai Shuto earlier this month, and the group is now operating independently in interesting development. And you know what? That's okay, as long as all of our enemies or potential enemies are all separated. And fighting each other, we will do okay. Oh, we have no more fuel. That sucks. Just sit on there if you can, guys. Just do your best. Just do your best. Oh, weekly changes are going up. Nice. I like that. And circle these guys, and they'll go bye, 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 bye. Nice. The May 15th incident. The Prime Minister has been assassinated. Radical officers connected to the. Nichirokai broke out into his office, official residence and shot Prime Minister Unokai. The claim they did so to avenge the death of Kata, Katayama-san and the murder of the workers in Niigata. The incident has greatly shocked the nation and the Admiralty Board. Mortified by the incident, has already begun a court-martial and a deep investigation into radical, radical activities within the Navy. Appoint Suzuki Kesaburo to replace Inukai. Oh, crud. That is not good. 
It's not good when your leader gets assassinated, usually. Unless you don't like the leader, then it's okay, right? Oh, hello. Not bad. There's not really much else we can do in here now, but that's fine. Hey, look at that. Not bad. Good job, guys. Good Jovarinos. I don't think they have anything over here, so that kind of sucks. Whatever. And we are over there almost. There you go. Oh, who is that? The Baratia Commune. The security debate. The debate in the Imperial Diet steadily increased the last few months, as now reaching a terrifying level. Many members fear for their lives, and so progress isn't just a matter of political power or personal pride, but of survival. There's a growing consensus that the current security laws aren't enough to protect democracy, and that, and that more are needed. The May 15th incident must not be allowed to happen again, and a comprehensive law and act must be made. Cool. But at whose expense? Why don't we just go straight into the capital? Probably not. But well, we could try. There you go, go that way. Can I hang out? Hey, there you go. Good job, guys. You can help out here, maybe. I could take the capital, but I'm here for army XP, so I don't really care. Nice job, guys. Good job. Resource extraction. How much are we actually extracting? A little bit of aluminum. A little tiny bit about of oil. Uh, gosh, we could do that. Nanping. Nanjing. Go, 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 go. Have a good time. I plays Italy I've never played as Italy in Kaiserreich or Kaiser Redux. Navy leadership protests army bias. Our recent investor in the uh, policies benefiting the army have angered the leadership of Earth Sea Fleet. Some of the more prominent members have expressed their disapproval in a private meeting earlier today. They'll tell them, well, tell them to wait and see. I like to keep it going down here, but okay, Navy will form, but the National Security Act is more important. A debate in the diet regarding the National Security Act has been raging for the past few weeks, and it's time for us to decide which course of our nation will take. Some conservative members of the diet fear that if the act is not passed, the radical elements in society will try to seize power. The future of Japan is, of course, in. Not yours, not mine, but our hands. We're being very collective here in this episode for some reason. Um, yeah. You show? There you go. If you need a train, start our exercising. Oh, do we get something here? Ooh, Air Force. What is it? Chief of Staff. Recovery rate. We do want to help out the Americans whenever they explode as well. Well, maybe. Or maybe just here to kill off a lot of people. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Artillery. I love artillery. Like, me and artillery, we're like best buds. Like, I love them. I love the Arties. Ooh, a refinery. That might be bad, but I think I want to go with civilian military factory or construction speed. I like that. Not nationalized as a Batsu. Well, we might get rid of that eventually. Kawasaki, huh? Kawasaki. Grind out that RXP. Use those horse boys. Come on, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Get in there. Oh, we barely got in there time. Oh, that's so nice. Coup d'etat in Siam. Oh, yes, please. Reinforce the garrison. Thank you. There you go. Where's the other horsey? Oh, it's up here. Um, you guys can go down there. ZMN. White Sun of China. If you like to read about this, please go right ahead. This happens every single time we play Kaiser Redux, so... It is what it is. Quite an adventure. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it is, so... Hey, look at that. We got it. Air base, please. Thank you. More divisions? Not bad. Not sure where to put them, but hey, that's not my problem. <laughs> ah, destroyed... Oh, we got him! Restorationists and Centralists. The Ishina Restoration Faction is a political ideology promoted by radical junior officers characterized by its anti-capitalism, anti-oligarchism, and anti-parliamentarianism. Usually coming from underprivileged and or humble backgrounds, many of these officers have experienced poverty from the childhood and observe what they consider to be the evil influence of favoritism, leading them to believe that the establishment has hijacked power from the emperor and is leading the nation into the abyss. The restoration solution was swept out the ruling establishment and restore all power back to the emperor and from there a complete national reform was to be initiated against them are the chu xinha the central faction who were close to the central military leadership who supported cooperation with the establishment and the militarization of politics this will be trouble the busan negotiations as the liberalization of our government was completed, the Koreans also demand reforms in the current situation. Korean leaders and social elites have proposed a possible meeting in busan to negotiate about the future of korea and the japanese empire rni accept the proposal to see what they have to offer Move further away from violent rebellion, Japanization policies. 
Um, well, colonial incentives. Chose mod chosen moderation. Modernize the Korean economy. Chosen integration. I've made my choice. <laughs> I've made our choice. Oh boy. Oh, come on. Bring it on, Koreans. Come on. Bring it on. Actually, we're getting involved here, too, if we really want to. Maklik. Legacy Leg of the Korean Rebellion in 1925. Due to the disastrous economic situation and ongoing instability, Korea rebelled against the government. Luckily, the rebellion was successfully suppressed and the dissidents were executed. However, because of recent political changes, minor student protests appeared in many parts of Korea. Suppressing them in time should nip that problem in the bud, but it may also have larger repercussions. Leave them alone. I like getting rid of them. I think that's the best course of action. That... Oh, Yunnan Cleek falls in a civil war. Is there any place in China that's safe from strife? Nope. And that's the way we like it. Just in, just in case. Ah, oh, thank you. Christian International Avant-Garde. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, oh, I, I figured this one would not be researched yet. We need that one done. Oh, okay. Would you like to go back? Uh, why am I helping these guys out so much? Do I like anybody here? I actually prefer you guys. Um, you guys are fighting with these dudes. Do we like anyone here? Oh, we like you guys. Maklik. What is that? Is this because we have the same faction? Same ideology? Um, what is what are these, what is Anqing doing? Where, where does Japan come into this? Uh, brought peace requires Japanese industrial methods. Is it friendly to Japan? Well, I guess we'll keep helping them out for now because we can. Why not? Uh, which guy are we sending over? Ah, this guy. Army two. I can't tell which one. It, oh, it's blue. Blue. Oh, that's such a good color, man. That's such a good color. I know I'm a little biased, but. Such a good color. Oh, there's the planes. There you go. Back to war. If we're not having war, are we really having fun? Of course not. Alright, so here's what we're going to do. We have a lot of these guys who are just going to be garrisons for us. Actually, I want to convert this to engineers. Because there's a little bit more support equipment, which is okay. A little bit less off attack, but gives them more entrenchment, which is something I think we could really use. We'll do that in a little bit. Let's go and do this and get some garrisons. Nice. So you guys are the garrisons. Do we have occupied territories? Yes, we do. And instead of militia, garrisons, it is. Actually, we can throw military police on you guys. Which will be fine with me. Do we have support? enough support? For now, we do? Good. Oh, Russia. I love Russia. Never been. Probably will never go. But, hey, hopefully. Maybe. American trapped in Russia does not sound like fun, though. Ah, yay, we arrived. We're ready to kill off more Chinese. Which doesn't sound very good or something I should really say online, but hey. Chinese are fine people unless they're fighting me in a war. I have so many hot takes, holy crap. Oh my goodness. If you never watch my Vicky 2 runs, well, maybe it's a good thing you don't. Ah, <laughs> oh, yes. I go back to Vicky 2. Mao Mao, the jackals of Kenya. Uh, I think this happens every time, too. The Bush War? What does he think he is? A white savior? So, I gotta play as Africa sometime. Or multiple different Africas. Because actually, at the start of the game, Mau Mau does exist. So, I gotta, I gotta play as so much Africa. I love Africa. It's so resource rich. Oh, wait. And I don't want to forget. I keep forgetting this. Destabilize him. Yes. Send movements for allies, 70%. Cool. Ah, National Security Act. The Notorious Peace Preservation Act was introduced in, 19 early, in early 1924 by the Tanaka regime amidst the Red Scare following the Kanto Anarchist Uprising in September 1923 and a syndicalist assassination attempt on then Crown Prince Hirohito in December of the same year. The act drastically limited civil rights and symbolized the draconian rule of General Tanaka. It was repealed when the regime was brought down by the constitutional restoration of 1926 by Prime Minister Suzuki Kisaburo. Now wants to reintroduce the act, albeit heavily moderated, and renamed the National Security Act. It's been strong opposition, even within his own cabinet, and public opinion has dropped to new low, but Suzuki believes its reintroduction is the necessary step to counter the rising tide of syndicalism, and he's not alone in this opinion. A cross-party parliamentary group led by Ta Takajima 
Chi Hu Chi Ku Hai of the Rikin Sayukai and Adachi Kenzo of the Min Saito. I declared the act as the last bulwark of constitutional government and support its passage. The House of Peers and the Privy Council are also form of the act. Uh, we must defend our democracy by any means necessary. The act is forced through. National Security Act, public opinion, and the opposition defeat the act. Oh boy. Oh boy. Do we defend democracy? Or do we have the longest day of Reno? Oh boy. Uh, well, let's see. Like I said, I kind of want to go down this way. Unable to function with no support from the Emperor. It seems democracy's days are numbers. Did not support the government. Supported the government, but pol political force was used to overcome this. So, to do defend, defend democracy, we gotta go down there. Do we really want to go that, down that way? The longest day. Um, the Shuo Restoration. Democracy is fallen, but it's an open question as to which faction will rise in its ashes. War support, stability, output, output, or Kodo uh, faction. Recovery rate, less bomb factory vulnerability, more stability. Conversion costs, which are never used, more max factories and state, which is actually pretty good. And the uh, Kakushinha faction, more stability, more planning speed, less stability. More construction speed and more infrastructure construction speed or military centrism. A political blueprint. Ooh, I like that less supply consumption quite a bit. A fun adjustment ordinance, not bad. Factory output and this. I guess we gotta defend democracy first. Maybe? What's going on? Trial of the May 15th Act, so in the meantime, let's go do naval reform. We can't just focus on our army. Our navy needs reforming as well, which help you know appease some people. Uh, appease, not pease them off, but appease them. Here, all right, you all, uh, just kind of go right there. Please leave me alone. Thank you. Come on. Ah. There you go. I don't know. Whatever. Any other new ships? Yes. Oh, we don't have a big navy, which is kind of unfortunate, but it, it'll it'll suffice for what we need. So. How are you guys doing? You're doing okay, maybe. Hopefully. We have no more PP, but that's okay. And we have no army XP, too. Oh, good. God, that's not good. Operation secured in Tianjin. Or Tianjin. Our troops have finally gained a stranglehold over our concession within Tianjin, granting us a formidable base to consolidate our military operations in China. Well, this is certainly not enough to allow passage into Fengqian. The military high commands are already ex exploring options to destabilize the city and give our troops legitimate re reasoning to enact a full-scale occupation. All according to plans. Aw, yeah. Go and get rid of these guys, too. Beautiful. Hope he's learning a lot. Becoming a commando. I love it. You only get .91 every day. Oh boy. Oh boy. And we won that one. Nice. Good job, guys. Good job. Good job. Jabal Shema. Jabba Jabba Shal Shema. On Ching Chang is gone. Good, good, good. I don't know. My voice. I don't know. I'm, I'm going crazy with doing this, but that's okay. It's because of Redux. So it's okay. Thank you. And we won that one, and we're going to win this one too, hopefully. Yes, please. Yes, 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 yes. Ah, uh, beautiful, my friends. Beautiful. Beat these people up. Have a good time with them. Show them who's boss. We need more guns. We always need more guns. So many more guns. In the meantime, you guys. I was going to put artillery on you guys. Oh, we, but we have enough army XP. Gosh darn it. Bad words. But light bad words. Not serious bad words. Just very light. Very, very light. Um. Yeah. Definitely that one. Look at our subbies. Subbies and chubbies. You guys actually win here? Terrorists attacked in Tianjin. Earlier today, an explosive device was detonated in the port city of Tianjin. Oh, no, no, no. Killing scores of civilians and wounding many more. Oh, boy. The police have claimed that this is a simply a case of anti concessionist violence, so the native Chinese are adamant that dark forces are at work, and some wondering if this has had any relation to our recent involvement in Tianjin. Obviously, the military's claimed it has nothing to do with them. Nothing to do with us. Come, come on, Chinese folks. You know we wouldn't do anything bad, do you? We never do anything bad. Never in a million years. Oh, Kamal was shot. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> well, things are not going well, too well for him, huh? Doesn't mean he died. But then again, I didn't read. I'm here to lead and not to read. Alright, what are you guys doing over there? Uh, I'd recommend going this way, guys. There you go. Can I do Tianjin stuff, please? Thank you. And actually, do we have yeah, a slight army bias? Oh, it hurts our political power. That's not good. Completed army focuses. They feel neglected? Well, maybe they should feel neglected for what they've done to us. Which is nothing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just go right on ahead, boys and girls. You're doing a great job. Hopefully become an urban specialist, maybe. Naval reform. All right. Take a look at this. We have done one naval focus. I guess we have to do technically two, then. we got to wait for this stuff to happen, which kind of sucks. Naval expansion. 
We get three naval dockyards? Nice. While our navy stands unchallenged with the Pacific, we cannot hope to defeat the German navy in a drawn-out war. Our fleet needs to expand quite rapidly. And I love getting more dockyards for free and beating up innocent militia divisions. The Trial of the May 15th Incident The court-martial of the 11 murders of, the, of Prime Minister Unaka began last month. Before the end of the trial, petition arrived at court, containing over 350,000 signatures and blood from sympathizers around the country, pleading for a le lenient sentence. In addition to the petition, the court also received a request from 11 youths in Niigata, asking that they be executed in place of the Navy officers and sending 11 severed fingers to the court as a gesture of their sincerity. The whole trial was unpopular enough to convince the court to accelerate the process, and although the death sentences were issued just yesterday, the assassins were executed at dawn today. The country's going crazy and and like so me too if it's not going crazy do we really want to do it maybe but maybe not while you touch us like that just let us go you know you hold get up there and don't don't lose <laughs> that's probably the most important thing just don't lose please oh uh, yeah we can get some better tanks uh i don't get more logistic companies but um Let's make sure we don't produce garbage. That's probably some report. A shocking revelation. Abtalung. Oh my gosh, it was all connected, huh? Cool, seize the power, huh? Aw, yeah. You're doing a great job. Keep getting attacked. Keep learning. Keep growing. Keep getting better. Kiva joined the Union of Copeland. Oh, good luck with that. They like the Coke. All right, I gotta refix this. Just don't lose. That's the most important thing. Just, just don't lose. You know. Nice. We'll be done with that soon. Sashnev, Suzuki, Kizuburo. Holy crap! Things are really falling apart here, aren't they? I do want to get this though. The unthinkable has happened again. Prime Minister Suzuki and his brother-in-law Hato. Hatoyama Ichiro were attending a small party rally in Kagawa today. Oh, Kawago. Uh, when Hato Hato Yama stood up to deliver a speech. A syndicalist terrorist from the Saitama Youth Volunteer Corps for the National Salvation shot Tuzuki and Hato Yama in retaliation for the execution of Prime Minister Unaka's assassins. Tuzuki's wound is proven fatal. Gomai Fuku wo Enorimatsu. Enorimatsu. Election of Mizu Ratarno. The death of Suzuki stunned the Riken Sayukai, an emergency convention was called. The bureaucratic Tono Nami, Tokonami, faction named after to Tokonami, Takejiro, chairman of the pro-Tanaka Sayu Honto during the Tanaka dictatorship and its aftermath has been crippled by the loss of their leader, leaving the reactionary Takajima faction to take control of the party from his new post as director of general affairs. Takajima enjoys decision-making power over the entire party, although he has stopped short of crowning himself chairman and pound appointed current prime minister and Tokonami Alain Mizuno Rantaro instead. Finally, some stability in politics. Well, we'll see how long this guy lasts. Just an assassination every few months. That's all it is. God, Lord, they love attacking. These people love attacking. The marshal holds on. Oh, look at that. Wasn't the junta was supposed to be temporary? A last republic is gone. I wanted to do an encirclement, man. I suppose we still can. Norway joined the Third International. All right. Go up there if you can. Encircle these two dudes if you can. That'd be oh, quite bueno. All right, and what happens? Is there anything happening on the left side here? Yes, defend democracy. Which we'll do next. Thirty-five day focus. After receiving the offer from the scheming army officers, General Haya Hayashi Senjuro is rejected to back their coup attempt, signing his responsibility to the established regime. With the trial of the fifteenth incident behind us, it's now time to secure democracy in the eyes of the people. Well, let's see how long that lasts. Naval expansion, sweet. Oh. Oh, they're starting World War II, uh, second Valkyrie early? The United States in disarray, the Civil War has erupted in the U.S., tearing apart the last shreds of unity in the Union. This presents us with a chance to remove the American presence from the Central Pacific by occupying the island of Guam. There's little, very little that the U.S. government can do to stop us at this point. Leave it be, seize Guam, and claim even more. Hey, look at this. That's kind of cool. Oh, oh, I, you know what? I kind of like this. I like that they split Nevada in half. This looks so much better than just... Nevada when it's weird little shapes like that, but okay, that's actually kind of nice. I'm sorry to any Nevadans, but it had to be done. Send volunteers. We could send some volunteers. Social Democratic Party, Social Conservatives. Uh, we need two divisions to send boys over there. Mm, you know what? Maybe we'll send some Marines over. 
They could be pretty good for fighting through rivers and such. But the mobility on these guys are pretty good too. And I'll send the Marines over. There, you can have some Marinos. There you go. We got no fuel, so whatever. The giant is a super good. It's only 1936. It usually happens in March, doesn't it? I'm pretty sure it happens only usually in March, but whatever. I'm going to wait before we get encircled here. Even then, I mean, we, ju we just go through the channel. Water channels. Where's the other... Oh, there you are. Alright, head on in there. And Jinan is next. Let's go on ahead if you can. Doesn't really matter to me. We got to defend democracy. Democracy. Actually, save a few guns. We can probably change some of these marines to make sure that we give them artillery instead. Uh, that's okay. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe we'll wait. We'll probably just wait. Alright, Marines, what's going on? Le oh my goodness, what happened here? Oh my goodness, what the garbage. Yeah, maybe we should, we should have sent the horses. We really should have sent the horses, holy crud. Keep fighting, guys, you're doing a great job. Zoo D, oh, fall of Rome. Secures power in Yunnan. Kingdom of Canada's got an interesting flag. Costa Rica joined the Anton. All right, then. Oh, look, we're getting attacked. Let me, oh, we moved over. Good. Oh, actually, just go, both of you go down here and kill them off. Who is this? Western Command Center? Goodbye, Western Command Center. I was I was thinking about playing as a PSA, I'll be honest, for this episode, but, you know, whatever. I want to get to one more focus before we do anything else, and the Americans have landed in San Francisco. Americans. Americans are funny. The Emperor and Democracy. Kolchak, huh? The government is weak, and so in a desperate move, he has asked the Emperor to speak. He's gone before Parliament to a rare appearance, and fortunately has supported the government. His words carry great weight, and maybe enough to keep the government afloat. Do we agree with the supporters? Support or argue against him? Agree with the Emperor? He's out of line. I think we have to go out of line for this one. Military centralism? Um... Military centralism. The emperor refused to support the government, and now a coup is certain. The question is no longer if, but when and who. When the government is unable to function with no support from the emperor, it seems democracy's days are numbered, but we gotta end this episode here. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and see you tomorrow. We we'll wanna to continue helping to destabilize China, and we'll help out maybe in the United States. Thanks for watching, have a tremendous rest of your day.